a quadrillion tons of diamonds under your feet. That diamond on your wedding ring isn't as rare as you might think. A quadrillion tons of them beneath your feet, ripe for the taking. There may be more than a quadrillion tons of diamond hidden in the Earth's interior, according to a new study from MIT and also other universities and geological agencies. But the new results are unlikely to set off a diamond rush. The scientists estimate the precious minerals are buried more than 100 miles below the surface of our Earth, so that's far deeper than any drilling expedition has ever reached. The ultra-deep catch may be scattered within car craton roots, the cratonic roots, the oldest and most immovable sections of rock that lie beneath the center of most continental tectonic plates. They're shaped like inverted mountains. Cratons can stretch as deep as 200 miles through the Earth's crust and into its mantle. Geologists refer to their deepest sections as roots. In a new study, scientists estimate that cratonic roots may contain 1-2% to diamond. Considering the total volume of cratonic roots in the Earth, the team figures that about a quadrillion, that's 1,016 tons, of diamond are scattered within these ancient rocks 90 to 150 miles below the Earth's surface. This shows that diamond is not perhaps this exotic mineral, but on the geologic scale of things, it's relatively common. This is what Ulrich Fohl said. He's a research scientist at MIT's Department of Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Sciences. He says we can't get at them, but still there is much more diamond there than we have ever thought before. Fohl's co-authors, including scientists from the University of California at Santa Barbara, the Institut de Physique du Globe de Paris, the University of California at Berkeley, École Polytechnique, the Carnegie Institute of Washington, Harvard University, the University of Science and Technology of China, the University of Beirut, the University of Melbourne, the University of College London. The sound glitch. Fall and his colleagues came to the conclusion after puzzling over an anomaly in seismic data. For the past few decades, agencies such as the United States Geological Survey kept global records of seismic activity. Essentially, sound waves traveling through the Earth that are triggered by earthquakes, tsunamis, explosions, and other ground-shaking sources. Seismic receivers around the world pick up sound waves from each source, such sources at various speeds and intensities, which seismologists can use to determine where, for example, the earthquake originated. Scientists can also use this side of data to construct an image of what the Earth's interior might look like. Sound waves move at various speeds through the Earth, depending on the temperature, density, and composition of the rocks through which they travel. Scientists have used this relationship between seismic velocity and rock composition to estimate the types of rocks that make up the Earth's crust and parts of the upper mantle, also known as the lithosphere. However, in using seismic data to map the Earth's interior, scientists have been unable to explain a curious anomaly. Sound waves tend to speed up significantly when passing through the roots of the ancient cratons. Cratons are known to be colder and less dense than the surrounding mantle, which would in turn yield slightly faster sound waves, but not quite as fast as what has been measured. Quote, the velocities that are measured are faster than what we think we can reproduce with reasonable assumption about what is there, Fowl says. And he says, then we have to say there is a problem. That's how this project started. Diamonds in the deep. The team aimed to identify the composition of cratonic roots with, that might explain the spikes in seismic speeds. And to do this, seismologists on the team first used seismic data from the USGS and other sources to generate a three-dimensional model of the velocities of seismic waves traveling through the Earth's major cratons. And next, Fall and others who in the past measured sound speeds through different types of minerals in the lab use this knowledge to assemble virtual rocks made from various combinations of minerals. Next, the team calculated how fast sound waves would travel through each virtual rock and found only one type of rock that produced the same velocities 
as what the seismologist measured, one that contains 1 to 2 percent diamond, in addition to peridotite, a predominant rock type of the Earth's upper mantle, and minor amounts of eclogite, representing subducted ocean crust. This scenario represented at least 1,000 times more diamond than people had previously expected. A thousand times more diamond. Fowl says diamond in many ways is special. One of its special properties is the sound velocity in diamond is more than twice as fast as in the dominant material in upper mantle rocks, that is, olivine. The researchers found that a rock composed of 1-2% to diamond would be just enough to produce the higher sound velocities that the seismologist measured. This small fraction of diamond would also not change the overall density of a craton, which is naturally less dense than the surrounding mantle. Quote, they are like pieces of wood floating on water, Fowl says. Cratons are a tiny bit less dense than their surroundings, so they don't get subducted back into the earth, but stay floating on the surface. This is how they preserve the oldest rocks. So we found that you just need 1 to 2% diamond for cratons to be stable and not to sink, end quote. In a way, Fowl says cratons, cratonic roots, made partly of diamond, make sense. Diamonds are forged in the high-pressure, high-temperature environment of the deep earth and only make it close to the surface through volcanic eruptions that occur every few tens of millions of years. These eruptions carve out geologic pipes made of type of a rock called kimberlite, named after the town Kimberley, South Africa, where the first diamonds in this type of rock were found. Diamond, along with magma from deep in the earth, can spew out through kimberlite pipes onto the surface of the earth. For the most part, kimberlite pipes have been found at the edges of cratonic roots, such as in certain parts of Canada, Siberia, Australia, and South Africa. It would make sense, then, that cratonic roots should contain some diamond in their makeup. It's circumstantial evidence, but we've pieced it all together, Fowl says. We went through all the different possibilities from every angle, and this is the only one that's left as a reasonable explanation, he says. This material was provided by Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and it's on geologyin.com. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.